Air Tov Chavarim. I'm Stephen Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live. And guys, the things that are going on right now throughout the Middle East here are very disturbing indeed. I uh, titled the message this, e this evening, Trouble Out of the North and East. Uh, coming from the scripture here, Daniel 1144 is what's in small print on your screen. But tidings out of the East and out of the North shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. That is the king of the north, what he does in regards to tidings out of the east and out of the north. And it's one thing that I've held to from the very beginning, even with the Ukraine conflict, Syrian conflict, everything that we've been watching, uh, how Russia has gotten involved, and now China even escalating uh, in this move, it is clearly tells us that the king of the north is not Russia. It is, in fact, the NATO forces. It is led by their king, right? They're sitting in Italy, Rome. Rome, Italy, that is. Uh, anyway, let's look at what's going on in the news. There is breaking news once again coming out of Ukraine area, but we're going to tie this all together to kind of in a, in a short broadcast here to really get you up to speed on what's going on, what's causing this, and how this is reflective of biblical prophecy. Uh, Ukraine says Russia has moved troops, missiles across the border, escalating tensions. This was reported on the Wall Street Journal on August 19th today. Ukraine officials say that Russia has slipped new air defense equipment and troops across the border into eastern part of the country as part of the effort to step up uh, pressure on Kiev. The uh, assessment, uh, Ukraine's defense intelligence says that... Um, 165 Russian troops, part of an air defense battery from the 60th Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade, have been operating inside the separatist-controlled areas of eastern Ukraine. Ukraine officials believe the new troops have been operating there for at least a week. They are inside Ukraine, uh, said Colonel uh, Sri uh, Strilk, uh, Chuk, the Ukrainian defense attache in Belgium. They are there to fight against Ukraine armed forces. They have everything necessary to conduct combat operations. Now, I personally, you can't have to say this here. In light of the UN statement that was released a, a, a couple of weeks back, a few weeks ago actually, where they state the largest death toll of eastern Ukraine citizens since the start of the war. I believe that's gotten Russia's attention. Of course, we already know Brian Whitmore of the Daily Vertical uh, really kind of flubbed that up when he made it look like it was Russia killing them all, well, in, when in fact it was actually Ukraine soldiers killing the eastern Ukraine citizens that are there in the region. Because why? There are indiscriminate bombings there that they do on a continual basis is hitting civilian targets, not even not even uh, hitting the, the troops there the, uh, that they have there fighting against them. But in recent weeks here, it has been an onslaught, uh, steadily onslaught against the eastern people of uh, Ukraine there. And it has not been any let up. And it has been the death tolls have been rising rapidly. And of course, uh, Kiev is trying to blame eastern Ukraine for this. Uh, and it's not been a, a provocation from them to begin with. They have only have been fighting back as they have been shelled. Uh, but unfortunately, Western media is very much pro uh, the Ukrainian government, Petro Poroshenko, that they put in there. And so you're not going to see an unbiased uh, approach when it comes to this. Uh, so has Russia moved in? Absolutely, Russia has moved in. And now I have not been able to corroborate the information that Russia has brought in the air batteries. But, you know, if you look at it, even in the article here by the Wall Street Journal, it is air defense equipment and troops across the border into the eastern part of the country. That's a defensive measure. That's not an offensive measure. That's them there defending those people because the bombardment just does not let up. And Kiev is using some very heavy artillery on these people here. So I think Russia is finally getting enough. And yes, Putin has moved a lot more troops to the Crimean border uh, on the north of Crimea there. 
uh, in conjunction as well as moving uh, upwards to 95,000 troops in a permanent base that they have built along the Ukraine uh, eastern side there with the possibility of needing to uh, protect these people. Uh, Putin has had, I believe, enough. And they, the prov provocations from Kiev government has been ongoing. It's been a non-step, le uh, no let up at all. The United States military and Canadian militaries are both there inside Ukraine. They've been training, helping, supporting uh, the Kiev forces there. They installed the government. So what do you expect? Let's continue on, guys, though. Uh, also, uh, the Wall Street Journal reported Russia builds up the army near Ukraine border. Russia is uh, bolstering its military presence on western border, sending tens of thousands of soldiers to a newly built installation within easy striking distance of Ukraine. The moves which come as Moscow ratchets up confrontation of the Black Sea Peninsula of Crimea are a centerpiece of a new military strategy the Kremlin says is meant to counter uh, perceived threats from the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO in other words, because why NATO is also, uh, before Russia ever did it, again, I have to stress this, NATO has shown aggressiveness by sending their own forces there to the border with Russia, even as we have reported here on Israeli News Live, uh, upwards to nearly 100 tanks on the Narva River. Do you not think that's not a provocation to Russia? And they call it just, well, military exercises and that there's no threat that Russia has to worry about. Guys, the West has broken every treaty agreement that has been done with Russia uh, since the breakup of the Soviet Union. And they continually reverse this around. It was not Russia that toppled the government uh, to begin with. Uh, that's kind of an absurdity when Russia had to rescue uh, Ke uh, Ukraine's uh, former prime minister there. He had to be rescued by Russia because of the coup that's going on. And the coup was not a Russian coup. That was a coup backed by the uh, Western powers there. So a lot of false information coming out that we're getting on our end in America uh, because no one's telling the truth about it. Anyway, DPR prepares for full-scale war with pro-Kiev forces. This is from the southfront.org. These are the uh, the separatists in eastern Ukraine there, they're saying here artillery attacks have dramatically increased around the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic. And Ukraine President Petro Poroshenko said that he does not exclude a full-scale Russian invasion in all directions. The smell of war again appeared in the eastern Ukraine. And uh, an essence of the matter lies in details, strengthening of attacks may be different, larger artillery calibers, more shots, and more victims at this time. We can say that the war in Donbass loses its borders. Attacks are becoming more frequent and more long-range. The artillery has covered Ukraine villages in the direction of Maripol, where shells did not fly more than uh, the year and a half. Borders of the war in Donbass are very con uh, conditional, but most often maintained. In other words, let me break it down because I can see it's Russian writing trying to tr do this in English. What they're trying to tell you is that they're being heavily attacked more and more and the borders are constantly changing because where the Minsk agreement had given a buffer zone there, uh, the pro-Kiev forces of Ukraine are constantly going across that and they're using larger and larger uh, military equipment there attacking the people in eastern Ukraine. As we stated in one of our news broadcasts, the next war on east Ukraine would be a war, uh, if Kiev launches a war, it'll be a war on civilians. Uh, but that may change. Uh, we made that statement, but if Russia steps in to back them up to keep them from being annihilated, that could change altogether. I wanted to share with you this video footage here. This is uh, was captured earlier today. And uh, we'll kill the volume on that. don't really need the volume in here because they're just playing music in their car. That is Russian troops, guys. You are seeing this. This, is, uh, this appeared on Ukrainian uh, website there showing the Russian military in Crimea. Uh, this is the north part of Crimea. Yes, so Russia is. We already know this. It's been in the news quite a bit. Uh, they're building up their forces and they're getting ready for, you know, what they may have to deal with. Again, I do believe that with Russia, Russia is not, 
I don't think Russia is here to provoke something. Russia has been digging in for, an, uh, for a defensive posture, not an offensive posture. Uh, this year, of course, this is a little bit old. It is more than double from what we're seeing now. 40,000 Russian troops are preparing for war in Crimea, and the U.S. is extremely concerned. Business Insider August 17th reported this. The Pentagon has identified eight staging areas in Russia where large numbers of military forces appear to be preparing for incursions into Ukraine, according to U.S. defense officials. As many as 40,000 Russian troops, including tanks, armored vehicles, Air Force units, are now arrayed along eastern borders with Russia. Again, what do you expect Russia to do? Is America just allowed to go in? Now, when I say America, let me stress that the Obama administration and all his little cronies that he has uh, that are backing him in different parts of the world. But uh, are they allowed to just go in there and amount all this massive military exercises, as they call it, and not just exercises, but put a full-scale military presence in Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, all these places that are on Russia's doorstep, and then expect Russia not to counter this measure, especially in light, because this is what you're not being told. If you want to go online, if you want to go on Twitter, whatever the case may be, Google, uh, Facebook, anywhere you want to see, you're going to see where Poroshenko's government is talking about they're being shelled and the number of times of violation. But, you know, it's the other side has their side, too. And that can easily be seen by front line or the, they actually call it the line front. That's the uh, pro uh, separatist group there where they're reporting all the times of the, uh, you know, the violation of the ceasefire agreements that are there, uh, especially in Twitter. If you just if you just put in Donetsk. Uh, hashtag Donetsk, you will see unbelievable amount of people letting you know what is happening at the moment. They're giving testimony, incoming, incoming, incoming. It is a huge number of attacks that are happening on these people in eastern Ukraine. And most of them, uh, you know, it is civilians that are being killed. That's the bad part of the war. It's too many civilians are losing their lives over this. And, but it's constantly made to look like Russia is the provocator here, uh, provocator, I should say, but it's not. Now, here's where we come into the biblical side of this, of Daniel 11's prophecy. Now, this is an old article here, but uh, as the guy that rewrote this on March 4th, that actually came out, I believe, in February of this year, he said it's a much-ignored huge news report from Reuters on Friday, February 27th, was headlined, Chinese diplomat tells West to consider Russia's security concerns over Ukraine. Now, he, he entitles this, China has just warned America to leave Russia alone or else. Uh, and, uh, you know, although his title is not what really the, the, the Chinese uh, ambassador has to say there to Belgium, it's still very much uh, reminiscent of what the China uh, Chinese government's sentiments are when it comes to their relationships with Russia and that of the West pushing against them. And by the way, China is doing a huge sell-off of all of its American asset dollars and using it to buy gold. Uh, that's only going to make the economy for the U.S. in a very unstable position. But like Russia, they are also becoming a huge gold buyer. I suppose they're getting ready for something pretty big, if you ask me. Anyway, China's ambassador to Belgium, which is not the capital of the EU, said that the nature and root cause of the Ukraine conflict is the West. Hmm. And that the West should abandon the zero-sum mentality and take the real security concerns of Russia into consideration. Now he's talking about that they're provoking Russia with all these NATO uh, movements towards Russia's borders. By real security concerns, he says, he is clearly referring to the NATO expansion right at the Russian border, the writer says here, and America surrounding Russia with U.S. military bases now increasingly including the most strategic of Russia's bordering countries, Ukraine. So it is happening, guys. And we're seeing this. Now watch this. It gets more interesting. Now, Syria, this, was, this just was out yesterday on the journal Neo.org. Syria... China and Iran join Russia in larger role. This is breaking news today, we find out as well. 
China has sent in military troops to help Syria. Several, watch the article, several developments this week mark an increase in activity from Syria's allies, Russia, Iran, and now China. These include Russian-Iranian agreement to use Iranian territory to position Russian uh, Toplev uh, Tu-22M uh, TU strategic bombers as well as Iranian and Iraqi airspace for both the bombers and Russian cruise missiles to pass through on their way to militant targets in Syria. Do you know why Iran is willing to get involved in this? Because those militant groups are Western-backed. They're backed by the Obama administration. And Iran doesn't like the Obama administration anyway. It also includes China's recent pledge to provide humanitarian assistance to the Syrian people, as well as what? Military support for the Syrian government troops in their fight to restore order nationwide. Now, think about it. Think about the scripture now. Daniel 11. Starting, let's look at verse 43. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver, over all precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. I didn't even put the Libyan news in here. Who is bombing Libya, guys? Who is causing the unrest in Ethiopia? Do you know they killed a hundred civilians the other day? Unarmed civilians there. They were peacefully protesting. They had their hands like this in, their, in, the, in the air, showing that they were no arms on them. They killed a hundred of them. You know why? Because Gulf Oil International, one of the partners there that is a majorly uh, owned by uh, stocks by the Vatican, yeah, they need to be able to, to drill and they need to make way for new improvements so the people are to get off the land or die. They're dying. Ethiopia at its steps. What does it say? Libya. See? The Libyans and the Ethiopians should be at its steps. What are they doing? They're bombing Libya. Who's bombing Libya? Is it Russia? No, I guess Russia is not the king of the north then, is he? But what is, watch what it says in verse 44. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Who, who's the him? The king of the north. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain, yet shall... Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. Yeah. That third temple's coming, don't you worry. It's coming. He's going to build that while he's destroying Libya and the Ethiopians. He's killing all of them. But he sure gets really bothered by what that tidings out of the east, China, and out of the north. All right, so look what we got here. China, Iran, and Russia. Well, even Iran is to the east. Isn't it interesting? It doesn't specify which country or anything, but Iran and China both sit to his east, east of Rome where the king sits. Let me put it that way. NATO is his military, his military horse that he rides into battle. Guys, we're watching prophecy come to pass before your eyes. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Truly, as we made the statement on our Twitter there and that, if you want to follow us on Twitter, please do Israeli News Live at Stephen Denoon, I believe is how it is on Twitter. It's on the screen, I believe, in the video here. But uh, we're trying to uncover truth in a world of global bias. I have never seen so much media bias in all my life. And I have never been pro-Russia, never. I, I grew up as an American, staunch, believe the Soviet Union was the most evilest empire on earth. That's just what my government taught me, it's what I believed. I come here and get right here in the middle where I can see both sides of the picture here, and then I begin to realize just how much bias and propaganda goes on. And I don't support communist China either. 
you got to remember they're communists for a reason. Still, the Catholic Church is the only state religion permitted there. Don't forget that. But they, they're troubled by their actions because, why? The Vatican lost control in the 50s. They've been trying to reestablish ties with China. Why do you think the, isn't it weird how the Pope, Pope Francis gets so involved in China? But I guess he's losing, losing his steam ahead while China forges closer and closer relationship with Vladimir Putin. I don't know. They're saying right now, according to the uh, DPR report there, that war could break out in a matter of days in Ukraine. Now, they're fighting. Don't think they're not fighting. The proxy war between the United States and Russia is already full scale uh, moving forward. Um, there was a video I was going to play for you. In fact, let me just, I need to get it. I want to play one thing for you guys before we close this broadcast because it's critical for you to realize just how much involved the United States is. Listen to this. All right, guys, here we go right here. Listen to this. This is the U.S. military. They're still there, still training Kiev's military. I want you to watch what Mr. Piat says. He's the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. Volunteer battalions are brought fully under interior ministry command. But these aren't volunteer battalions. These are the battalions that were protecting the former regime on the Maidan. They're former interior ministry troops. They're part of a new institution. Uh, this is a new National Guard, which is very much part of the new Ukraine. It's something the United States is helping to bring about. Thank you, everybody. Did you, did you notice what the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine said? part of the new Ukraine, something that the United States is helping to bring about. That's very similar to what Obama stated in a news conference one time where he actually stated a very similar statement where he says, we help form the new government. We put them in power. And they blame everything on Russia. That's kind of odd, isn't it? A coup comes, the pro-Russian president is thrown out. He has to run for his life. Putin rescues him with his military special forces. Then a U.S.-backed, put in, placed in government is there, but it was all done by Russia. If Russia was the coup, if Russia was the one that overthrew the government, Russia would have their own president in. Does that make any sense, guys? I mean, can you really see how stupid it is with these, with these statements? I mean, watch RT News sometimes and watch when they're, they're inside uh, uh, Washington, D.C. at the press conferences there and how stupid it is that the U.S., the, some of the statements they make, is, it's... It's beyond words how biased, how obvious they are that they're lying. And they will lie right in front of your face. Just anything to protect the Obama administration. What would it be like with Hillary Clinton? Hmm. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.